What's up, Wizards? It's Dev. Recording like a million videos right now, a bunch of the 10 cards rated stuff, and we got to cover the world championships. But I figured while I'm at it, I'd do some previews. Because there's like five cards to look at from Foundations today. Not much of a preview video, obviously, but I didn't want to hold these over till tomorrow because there's going to be another like 40 tomorrow. A lot of people have previews tomorrow. So I wanted to make sure that I went ahead and told you about what we did get to see from today, even if it isn't a whole lot. There is some stuff to talk about, like Stroke of Midnight. We saw two reprints today. Stroke of Midnight is already in standard. It's in the, uh, I believe, the Wilds of Eldraine set. But just to let you know, I've been playing Stroke of Midnight in standard. In the arena, I've been playing it in like mono white or white X decks that are kind of mid-range focused. They need something to kill artifacts with, planeswalkers that's not called Get Lost. They need something other than just Get Lost in the main deck to take out non-land permanents. You could resort to putting black into the deck and play like not anguish done making, what is it called? Legions to Ashes. Some people have done that. Some people put, you know, like make an Abzan list and play like tear asunder. I've seen Assassin's Trophy, like all kinds of things like this and adding colors to do it, but you don't have to add any colors to play Stroke of Midnight. I actually think this is a sick card. I've used it a bunch. I've resolved it a bunch and it's kind of nice to have it in standard for five years. I think this is Better than you think it is if you haven't played it yet. It's basically gift a fish and destroy a non-land permanent at instant speed, which is good. It actually is good, but getting standard for five years now. Nice. Next is Slag Storm from Mirrodin Besieged. <laughs> this is three mana, one and two red for a sorcery. Choose one. It deals three damage to each creature or it deals three damage to each player. So I actually like this a good bit better than like Brotherhood's End a lot of the time because... Brotherhood's End sits in your hand a good bit if you're not, you know, playing against a creature-based deck or an artifact-based deck like, you know, Simulacrum Synthesizer or whatever, or a Brass Forge it can be decent against. But a lot of the time, that extra, you know, destroy all the artifacts mode is not great. Um, in this case, if you don't have creatures to hit, you can just use it as a burn spell, which I think is actually really good. In the, in the you know, decks you're going to, the matchups, you're going to use it as a burn spell. You probably don't care about your life total that much. You're playing against burn or you're playing against um, control or something. They're not hitting you for that much damage. <laughs> you know, you can definitely use your life total as a resource because you're depleting theirs faster than yours is going down. So I just really like this as a choice for reprint. It could have been Brotherhood's End. It could have been Anger of the Gods or something like that. If you're looking for a three mana, three damage red sweeper, I think this is probably the best choice to reprint, you know, a lot of versatility on this, um, always does something never rots in your hand, good in a burn deck, good anywhere, like in a mid range deck. If you've only got access to red, it's pretty decent. So yeah, fantastic reprint choice here. I think one that I would have not necessarily thought of, but again, they did a good job. They did a good job. <laughs> Let's move on to uh, new stuff, cards you've never seen before in your whole life. And uh, I want to start with one that I think I think we're going to go in like a weird reverse order to how a lot of other like content creators would make this video. Because um, usually, you know, I try to go in order of relevance. But I'm actually going to start with the card everyone's talking about first. It's Homunculus Horde. This is uh, this was teased in Mara's teaser. And I even said, you know, oh, if this is like a four mana two, two or something like that, then like it's still probably playable. That's exactly what it is. It's three and a blue for a two, two homunculus. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a token that's a copy of this creature. We already knew what this text box was. Um, and it was just up to us to speculate if there was more to the text box, if there was a keyword ability or something on this card that we didn't see in the teaser. Uh, and again, my speculation was that it would be like an overcosted vanilla guy and boom, that's exactly what it is. This is only going to create like one copy of itself the first turn it comes into play, right? But obviously, if you can say play it and then play like a cantrip effect, or if you have an effect that draws a card when you attack, right? So play it first, main phase, attack, draw your card. Um, then it's going to create a copy of itself. But then if you draw a card after that, if you draw your second card in a turn, say during your opponent's turn or something like that, then you get two copies of it and you have four now. Then if you draw your second card on your turn, what do you make four copies of it and you have eight of them now or something like that? So this will get out of control, but it won't happen extremely fast. You know, you only get one iteration of this every turn cycle or two really every turn cycle, but You'll be very lucky to get that, <laughs> to actually make that happen. So I just think that this is probably overpriced. It's more of a novelty than anything else, but 
a very cool novelty. And if you play it in like commander and you have ways of protecting it, then like maybe it could be if we get even in standard, I think that it might be worth trying out. Um, if we get an effect, that's like one mana protect a guy, draw a card, you know, like that would be kind of silly with a card like this, but even then, I don't think it'd be good in standard because you're paying four mana for a 2-2 that does nothing the turn that you play it nine times out of ten. So I think it's kind of a trap in standard. It's one of those like novelty, again, novelty, like kitchen table type cards. But I'm a big fan of those. So, <laughs> so I'm not going to say I don't like the guy. I just like don't think he's very competitively viable whatsoever. So I don't have that much to say about him, to be honest. But <laughs> that just means we get to move on to two cards. There's two cards remaining today. That's it. But these are both, in my opinion, potentially way better than they appear to be. And we'll start with Guarded Air. This is six mana, five and a white for a 1-1 human noble with lifelink. When it enters, create two 3-3 white knight creature tokens. That's the whole card. Great enter the battlefield trigger. Really good enter the battlefield trigger. This is actually putting you know, seven total power and toughness into play for your six mana investment. And I do think six mana is like a lot. It's like way too much for standard, but all day this, this comparison has been creeping up in my head. So forgive me. Overlord of the Mismores costs seven mana to get you, you know, six, six and two, two power flyers. This, and it, yeah, you can pay four mana and just get the two, two power flyers. And it's probably better <laughs> than this most of the time. Don't get me wrong, but you know, when you're looking at like a blinkable dude with a great ETB trigger that puts bodies on the table that you can abuse that ETB trigger over and over, like this is up there, you know, like in a budget way, I guess it's not that bad, but maybe even as like a one of in certain standard decks, I could see it, but I really don't think it makes the cut, you know, for six mana, you're going to play this for the eternal wanderer. So like, don't, don't take me the wrong way here. I don't think this is quite standard playable, but Again, when you compare it to certain cards that do see some standard play, put some tokens on the table or whatever, I'll take it, dude. The caretaker's talent draws a card, right? When you play, it's, it's not bad. You draw a card off of some other stuff that you've like enchantments you might have into play. So I don't know, dude. I, I kind of should hate this, but I don't, you know, like in a deck with parting gust, you can use the parting gust as removal on your opponent's creatures, or you can blink this guy. It's just all kind of okay, you know, like. I keep wanting to say caretaker's talent, but I've already said it. There's just a number of decks that care about tokens. Like in your Toby deck, you play Toby. He gives you the four, four token. You play this and suddenly you just need one more token to make all your tokens gain flying. You know, like it's not bad with caretaker's talent too. Let me go back to that card for just a second. If you don't mind, you pay a mana, you get a three, three, you know, like it's better than most of the tokens that deck can copy. So I don't know, dude, six mana is obviously too much. And I really want to hammer in that. I don't love this card, but like, it's sneakily, sneakily okay. It's sneakily okay. I'm telling you, you'll never see it in standard. You'll never see it on the arena if you're not playing draft, but it's so close to there. It really is. It's so much closer to there than you think it is. But let's look at the final card of the day. And again, a pretty short preview video, but this one, this one. Okay. So guarded air, the one on screen right now, again, it's just not there, but it's very close to there. I wouldn't say it's a sweeper, a sweeper, a sleeper. <laughs> this next card, this final card, I think we're getting close to sleeper territory. I think this card does not look very powerful to most people, but I think it's something. I think it's got something. I think there's something there. It's Fay Bloom trick. This is two and a blue for an instant. Create two one, one blue fairy creature tokens with flying. When you do tap target creature and opponent controls. Okay. So three meta and instant speed for two flying guys. There's already a thing in standard that's like two and a white at instant speed. Charge of the Mites. That's the card I'm thinking of. Two and a white at instant speed. Excuse me. At instant speed to uh, make two Mite guys that can't block. But they have Toxic one. Um, and then I think you can also, if you choose to, rather than do that, you can use it as a removal spell. Um, kind of a case of the Gateway Express. Still damage equal to the number of creatures you control to a target creature. This does not have the removal mode on it. But it kind of does, you know, like tap down a guy they control. It's a stun counter, dude. It's not a stun counter. <laughs> but like if you play it during their combat step or when they move into combat, you keep this guy from attacking and you get two one one flyers. So you can block anything nearly. 
at that point. Or you can play at the end of their turn, keep that guy from blocking, get two 1-1 one, one flyers. They're fairies, and there's like a slight fairy sub-theme in standard right now. So like Obira, you get um, two pings off of Obira when you play this. Um, and there's some other stuff that care like spell stutter. You know, this is like two um, extra mana they have to pay if you get a spell stutter after this. So maybe it works in fairies, but I think it's just kind of fine in like a mono blue tempo deck because you guys remember Allrun's Epiphany and how like that would give the opponent two birds after they played Allrun's Epiphany, and then the birds would just like break your face for a couple of turns and like win the game. This doesn't give them an extra turn. I'm not saying it's as good as Alrin's Epiphany, but it does give you two 1-1 one, one flyers. And, like, there are multiple cards that have given us a couple of 1-1 one, one flyers for a few mana, and, like, we'll play the crap out of them, dude. So, I don't know. It's not, like, Spectral Procession, but it is very close. When you consider it, gives you one less creature than a Spectral Procession, but it does so at instant speed and plays with tempo. I really think there's something to this thing. I really do, man. I'm not sure how standard playable it actually is, but it's the closest thing we've seen to like a real big time sweeper. It's the second time I've done that. A real big time sleeper in this set, as far as I'm concerned. You know, we've seen a bunch of like five mana dudes that do a, a cool thing once they're on the table, if they stay on the table. But this is the first time I've seen a card that I'm like, okay, that's deceptively actually competitively powerful so i know i'm going a little bit in on it today and that might seem like oh i'm a content creator i gotta make something out of this video we've only got five cards today they're all kind of mad but no this is this is genuine i actually think that this card is standard playable depending on the format and we've got five years to play the card so the right deck may come along you know there's cards or decks in standard that just care about putting multiple creatures into play on one card and this card does that you know, it's not Resolute Reinforcements, but it's very close to being as good as Resolute Reinforcements because the creatures have flying and it's got a tempo bit on it. So I just think this is probably deceptively, insanely good. And I just I want to try the card. I don't think that it's like as high of a power level as as to say it's insanely good. It's probably not like an eight or anything. You know what I mean? But I do think the card is like a deceptive six or something. So I can't, I cannot wait to try this thing out in a deck or two. There's already a couple of mono blue, like tempo decks in standard that could probably leverage this. I just think the flyers are going to be like way more annoying than they look. So that's all we have for today. We got five whole cards to look at today and two of them are reprints, but decent ones in my opinion. Either way, tomorrow, like I said, we get like a billion cards. Like if you look at the where to find foundations previews page on magic.wizards, then you will find that there's, I don't know, 20 people tomorrow with previews. So that, mean, that means you're going to get a lot of cards. So, you know, if you haven't subbed to the sandwich yet, do it. There's a lot of cards to talk about tomorrow. But I'm interested in today. Live for the day. What, how do you feel about these? Do you think Fabloom Trick is actually good? Am I just being weird here? Am I being stupid? Is this card actually terrible? I don't think so. I think there is something here. But anyway, if there were cards in these five cards today that you thought were really exciting... I'm all ears. Let me know in the comments section. And apart from that, I'm done so for this one. So just do all the YouTube stuff. Hit the button shape like a thumb. Subscribe to the channel and hit up the Patreon. Links in the description for this stuff. And uh, yeah, you'll help support the channel. But either way, I'll see you tomorrow for a quote unquote real day of previews. I'm Deb from the place. Thanks for watching, Wizards. Spread love and be kind.